How's it going, everybody? Got some more tribes to send. It has been a while. There are, there are a few reasons for this. Um, one of them has just been a time thing, you know. I've been pretty busy lately with uh, work and things that do not involve gaming. But, um... <laughs> I have been playing the game a little bit less. And I guess there are a couple reasons for that. Number one would just be... Um, I used to play this game a lot. Like, we're talking a lot. So I think it's... Uh, I sort of burn out a little bit on it. I still play it, and I still find it really fun. It's still probably my favorite current first-person shooter. But it's not a thing that I play every time I play games anymore, you know. It just sort of uh, oversaturated my time with it, I guess. Also, doesn't this look epic? Look at that. Beautiful. And we'll follow it up with this. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's that's one reason for it. Or that's actually the main reason for it. Um, you know, time thing and just... Uh, I'm sorry, I have to show you this one too. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> you know, just a general time thing and just sort of... Uh, I'm pacing myself a little bit more when it comes to playing this game. That said, I am still playing it, and I do plan to continue to make content on it. Or of it, I suppose. Um, probably what you're going to see is a lot more kind of silly stuff, which is cool. Um, this video would definitely fall into that category. Basically what I'm doing here is just sort of screwing around with the Shrike, which is something I haven't done a great deal of, so... Um, still, still learning the ropes of it, I guess. Um, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. And I've actually uh, unlocked everything in the game at this point, including all the uh, you know all the weapons and all the perks and everything. So, you know, at this point, it's pretty much just do what I want, that kind of thing. And I always say that the measure of a good game is when uh, after you've unlocked everything, you know, if it's a, especially if it's like progressive uh, progression-based multiplayer. If after you've unlocked everything, it's still fun and you still want to keep playing, then it's probably a good game. There are certain games where, um, you know, the focus is all on, okay, i got to unlock this, got to keep unlocking stuff. And then once you've unlocked everything, it's kind of like, oh, well, I don't really want to play this anymore. And um, Call of Duty sometimes falls into that, uh, that category. Again, not putting down on Call of Duty. I play Call of Duty, just not very much. But uh, I found in that game, and in other games like it, you know, a lot of times you're like, okay, I'm just I'm gonna work towards maxing such and such weapon, and then as soon as that's done, you're like, oh, well, I don't really want to play this now, and that usually means that the gameplay itself isn't uh, all that spectacular. It's more like you're playing the game for the progression, which again is fine. Um, uh, but again, a game like this, that uh, the fact that I'm still enjoying playing it, in fact I'm enjoying playing it more, now that I don't have to worry about unlocking stuff, that, uh, you know, tells me that the game is in fact quite good and can stand on its own. Um, now, one of the things I wanted to talk about this episode was uh, the move from matchmaking towards server browser. Obviously, this happened a while ago, but it's just been so long since I posted a video of Tribes um, that uh, I haven't covered it yet. So, obviously, the way it used to work was there was a matchmaking system, you know, you would join a Quo, and it would put you in with a bunch of people who were probably around the same level as you. And, um, you know, probably around the same skill level. Maybe. And what we have now is a server browser, you know, you pick a server. Some of them are balanced by level, but not most of them. And, uh, you know, they all have custom settings and stuff, so pretty much find what you like and play on that. Now, I'm sort of of two minds about this, this whole transition. Um, oh, by the way, we tried to do this. We tried to make it work. We almost got it, but a guy ended up shooting me off. I swear to you guys, one day, one day I will get a video where I manage to uh, fly back to the to the flag stand on a Shrike, but uh, <laughs> that day has not yet come, I suppose. 
Anyways, um, I was talking about the server browser, yes. I'm kind of in of two minds about it, because on the one hand, having a server browser is always a good thing, because it lets you, um, or at least always partially a good thing, because basically what it does is it lets you find a server that you're comfortable with, you know, you like the, uh, you like the configuration, you like the settings that the server uses, you like the people, for the most part, on the server, you come back and you play with these same people, you know, repeatedly. And that's good, because it builds sort of a community, and, um, you know, if you're playing with the same people, people have a higher chance of being respectful and, uh, you know, not ragey and obnoxious. <laughs> and that applies to, you know, me or you as well. You know, if you're playing with a bunch of people that you know, you're more likely to just sort of laugh it off when they do something obnoxious, like, oh, stop being such a troll, you know, that kind of thing, versus just getting really angry. Um, so that's cool. And obviously, again, finding the server that has all the settings that you like. Um, you know, for instance, the server I'm playing on here, I think it's Air Combat Free Shrikes, one of those. Basically, you know, Shrikes are free, so you can just run up at any time and grab a Shrike, which is cool. Obviously, that doesn't work in a competitive scenario, but let's be honest, playing pub servers doesn't really count as a competitive scenario. Um, so that's cool. I've very much been enjoying messing around on the uh, servers with free shrikes and uh, occasionally servers with friendly fire. That's kind of weird, although it results in a lot of uh, a lot of death from juggernauts and brutes. But it's kind of interesting. Um, so that's cool, like I said. Getting that kind of stuff, and, uh, you know, there are the matches where the capture limit's increased, so it's more of just a mess around kind of thing. That's, that's cool. Oh, you just knock me out of the way there, don't you? Um, now, on the other side of that, sometimes there are some problems with the, uh, the server browser. The main problem, I think, stems from a lack of balance in it. Now, obviously, as I said, some of the servers are uh, rank restricted. So, you know, this is ranks 1 through 7. This is ranks 10 and over. This is ranks, you know, 20 and over, whatever. What, um... The problem is that nobody really plays on those servers, and I don't really blame them, you know. It's, like, who would want to stay in the novice servers after, you know, moving up? But what happens is you get mostly groups of people on, um, you know, just the free servers, and the teams just end up really, really unbalanced. So before using the matchmaking, you tend to end up, if say you're level 30, I'm 30-something, 30 so let's just say around 30. Um, I know, th or I knew that when I was using the matchmaking, I would end up with people around the same level who, um, you know, just being of a higher rank doesn't automatically make you better at the game. But there's a general expectation that, you know, a rank 30 is going to know what to do and be able to do that job better than somebody who's rank 10, right? That's just kind of obvious and accepted. The problem with the uh, the matchmaking is a lot of times you get these really unbalanced teams. So you have five or six people who are 30 to 40. You have, you know, um, three or four people that are around 20, and then you have a bunch of people who are 1 through 10. Again, not a problem, because theoretically these would balance each other out, right? If you have the level 30s equally balanced on each team, you can expect them to be doing their job, you can expect the level 20s most likely to be doing a good job, but the, um, you know, the level 1 through 10s are probably still learning the game and just going to be kind of running around or camping the generator or that kind of thing. The problem is that uh, human nature uh, dictates that the teams will more often than not stack horribly. So you end up with all the level 30s on one team, and, um, you know, all the level 1 through 10s on the other, which results in horribly, horribly unbalanced matches, and just complete stomping of, uh, <laughs> you know, the opposite team, which is kind of lame. And obviously this happened before with the, uh, the matchmaking as well. You know, you got the good guys, or, you know, the people that were in the top tier 
of all the matches, and then everyone would try to join their team, and everyone who loaded slower or who wasn't quick enough ended up on the other team, and that team got completely decimated. However, it is less of a problem when everybody's level 30, right? You know? A level 30 who's not very good is probably still going to be better than a level, you know, 5 who doesn't know exactly how the game works yet. Maybe. Not always. There are plenty of people who are level 10 who are really, really good. So, uh... That's always a possibility, but you get my point, right? Having a team of uh, all gold ranks stacked against a team of all bronze ranks, not going to work out so well. And I guess the main, my main point here is that it sort of um, makes the game a little bit less fun, where it either, it, you know, it's, it's predetermined who's going to win the match, basically. And some servers have auto balance to... Uh, try and fix this, although what i found is that the auto balance really doesn't work that well. I've been, uh, you know, second place on my team and gotten auto balanced in the last, you know, five seconds and then lost the match. This literally happened just the other day and I was kind of upset. Um, I don't know if there's really a way to fix this though. Like I said, it's really human nature, right, to want to stack the teams and end up on the winning team. Nobody wants to, you know, nobody wants to lose. So, I don't know. Now, I've heard that the matchmaking still works. You know, it just places you on a server. So I have to wonder if it still will, you know, balance you around what rank you are and try to find a server that has a lot of high-ranked people on it, but... I don't know. In the meantime, you know, it's sort of just decreased the, uh... competitiveness of pub matches, which sounds like a silly thing to say. But, um, you know, I really haven't seen a lot of the really good close matches, um, you know, with really well-organized teams and that sort of thing, ever since the server browser was introduced. And that wasn't common back in the, <laughs> the days of matchmaking either. But, um, I don't know, I feel like we've, we've just lost a little bit there. That said, all in all, I do still feel that the server browser is better than the matchmaking. Having, you know, just server browser is better than having just matchmaking. By far. By far better. So, I don't know. You know, there are always going to be positives and negatives to everything. Um, but I know that for me, it has just taken a little bit of the fun out of it, just because it seems more like most of the matches now are just about messing around and not about, you know, trying to get good balanced uh, matchups. So, we'll see. I'm obviously going to continue to play it. And, uh, you know, as more people learn more about the game, maybe it'll get better. So that's, uh, that's what I had to say about that. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that, too. Um, you know, do you think that the move to the matchmaking has been a good thing? More than likely, you probably feel similarly to how I feel, you know, it's kind of mixed. But I feel on the whole that it's been a positive thing. So, let me know what you think. Um, now, as far as this actual match, I think I said it already, I'm really just kind of messing around with the Shrike in this one. Um, one of the cool things that the server browser has brought in, hold on, watch this kill. If you want to make people rage, that's how you do it. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the cool things that the server browser has uh, introduced is the ability to customize how much vehicles cost, which means you can end up on uh, matches where shrikes are free, which is kind of awesome. Obviously, this would completely screw everything up from a competitive standpoint, but it's a pub in Tribes Ascent. There is no competitive thing going on here. <laughs> um, so I've been messing around with the Shrike quite a bit lately. You know, obviously if it is uh, not costing you several thousand credits to get, it's a little bit better of an investment, even though it's not really an investment at that point. You know, versus spending all of your hard-earned credits on uh, something that's probably going to get blown up right away, you know, you can just uh, go back and get another one if need be. Um, 
in this match, this entire match, like I said, it's just me messing around with the Shrike, pretty much. I'm using Technician, um, just because that's what my driver class is on. Basically using um, Wheel Deal and Pilot for the perks. Wheel Deal being cheaper vehicles, and Pilot being... Um, I actually don't remember what Pilot does, I just remember that the the bonus, once you get it fully upgraded, is that you will eject from a, an exploding vehicle without taking damage. So, you know, normally your vehicle gets destroyed and you die. If you're using pilot, you can just sort of jump out and be fine. Which, as it turns out, is really, really, really good. I would recommend that if you're going to be messing around with vehicles, you pick that perk up, because it's very, very helpful. And I'm going to miss that horribly. Good job. Um, as far as strategies go for the Shrike, I'm certainly no expert. As I said, I've just recently started sort of messing around with it. But uh, if you're planning on using the Shrike, there are basically two roles, as far as I can tell, that seem to work pretty well. There's the Chaser, and this involves either um, killing the person with the Shrike by crashing into them. Works pretty well for the Pathfinders that fly way up in the air because they don't really have any way to dodge. Um, and also, you know, you can just use the Shrike to get a speed boost, sort of jump out and, um, you know, kill him, like you saw just a couple seconds ago in the video. Um, and the other use would be for flag capping. If you jump out of a Shrike in motion, you get a huge speed boost, which can uh, allow you to basically get a high-speed grab with very little effort. And this is something that, in a competitive scenario, not really going to work so well. Um, you're better off just letting a Pathfinder, you know, take a route around the map that ends up at a 300-something grab. But it does tend to work pretty well in pubs, and you'll see me pull it off a couple times in this match, actually. In fact, one of them was earlier. Um, you know, people don't expect you to grab the flag, necessarily, and they certainly don't expect you to grab the flag at a high speed if you're not playing Pathfinder. And you can use that to your advantage against a disorganized team. Um, so there is one thing to keep in mind though. The longer the chase goes on, the more of a disadvantage you're going to be at. And with that in mind, you probably want to take the straightest path back towards your flag stand, meaning you're going to want to go straight down the middle. And this is usually a horrible idea when you're playing Pathfinder, because, you know, most of the really fast routes don't go straight down the middle, and obviously there are exceptions to that. But, um, you know, usually the really fast routes sort of take a more roundabout path, and that's a way of kind of balancing it. But in a situation such as this, where they're not really expecting a technician to come in and grab the flag, I want to go straight down the middle so I can get as close to my flag stand as possible before they realize what's happened. So, for instance, no one's really even started to chase me until about here. And I'm basically back by now. Now, again, this obviously doesn't work in a competitive scenario most of the time. And also doesn't work most of the time against a well-organized team. Say they have a really good chaser or a really good sentinel. You're going to get taken out. However, it works really well for catching people off guard, as I said. And in fact, uh, doing the Shrike grabs and the Grav Cycle grabs can work pretty well if you're playing, um, say, Soldier or Technician. I think the main class besides Pathfinder that people will grab with is uh, the Soldier. The reason being that you still get a pretty decent amount of speed, but you have a lot of extra health compared to uh, Pathfinder. So if you are grabbing as a Soldier or a Technician using the Shrike grab sort of thing, it can actually work pretty well simply because the Sentinel that would normally be able to take you out uh, if you're a Pathfinder going straight down the middle, isn't going to be able to get your health all the way down. So, it's worth trying. Just don't do it over and over because you'll most likely uh, get killed if they figure out that you're you know, you know you're just taking the same path over and over. But uh, definitely something worth trying, especially in a pub sort of scenario. Um, as far as general, again, as the general Shrike Shrike stuff goes, you know, Chaser and occasionally Capper. Other than that, it's pretty
probably not the most useful thing. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm no expert. All I do is ram shrikes into grav cycles, so... <laughs> yeah, I liked that. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have another strategy that works pretty well in shrikes. That's the main thing I've seen it used for, you know. Um, it seems to work the best out of all the strategies I've seen. But hey, always open to suggestions. Not a lot to say other than that in this match. If you are planning on playing um, the technician on offense, sort of like I'm doing here, um, I'd recommend using the thumper just because it's really, really good. Um, in fact, I would say it's one of the best weapons in the game. You would think, and again, I think I said this in my previous video with Technician, you would think that the Technician would be a class that relied more on turrets and that sort of thing for offense, more like in, uh, say, Team Fortress, but you've got a crap ton of firepower as Technician, especially if you're using the Thumper. So people will often underestimate you. Also, why say fall? Why? Why would you do that? Um... So, you know, Technician off Offense can work reasonably well. If you are planning to do the whole go the whole Shrike route, um, it's worth considering putting on um, a secondary that has, you know, offensive capabilities. So, I think I'm using the Double Barrel Shotgun in this one. It's not something that you're going to end up using a lot, but, you know, if you're just jumping out of your Shrike over and over, you don't really need the Repair Tool. Um, the Sparrow Pistol works pretty, pretty well. Um, but, I don't know. I prefer the Shotgun. It's sort of a chance thing, you know, whether it hits for a lot of damage just because of the spread, but, um, it can do a ton if it, uh, if it needs to, I guess. Um, other than that, as I said, the perks that I'm using, Safe Fall and Pilot, or not Safe Fall, uh, wheel deal and pilot. Worth looking into if you're planning to, you know, screw around the vehicles. Um, I'm using the quick fuse grenade because, well, it's really cheap and uh, will kill pretty much everything. And that's about it. I mean, honestly, it could be using any any class in this video. I could be, be using the soldier with the spin fuser or whatever, but I just it seems to me that technician works best as a driver class, just maybe just because it's technician, maybe there's no actual reasoning behind that, but who knows. Anyways, this match is just about over. Um, not too much else to say, honestly. That was a good shot, by the way, that uh, Merv launcher shot just now. But it's just about over. Um, as I've said before in a couple of my previous videos, uh, regular content is resuming. That includes regular tribes content, so uh, hope you guys want to stick around because there will be more. More silly things and uh, hopefully more not so silly things. So I want to thank you guys for watching. What was the final score? 25 and 4. Eh, that's decent. It's pretty reasonable. And. Um, Got a few of the, uh, well, ended up on top of the team, so not too bad. Anyways, want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.